Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be here, gathered to hear from the Lord. You know, uh, we're not going to talk about this much today, but um, he said that my house should be called a house of prayer. House of prayer. A prayer is really where we inquire and we expect to hear from him. This is what this is. It's a house where we come, we meet together, and we expect to hear from the Lord. Amen. Well, I'm Pastor Nate, and I get the uh, privilege of sharing the word with you again this morning. Um, we're going to actually be kicking off uh, really the, uh, a new series this morning. Um, we were in the start with one, which was really laying some foundational things um, for just two weeks. Uh, and we're going to talk this morning and for a little while about a house in order. If you've been here for any length of time, we've been talking about uh, this for this coming year, 2024, that we would have a house and a house that's in order. And um, I, I believe that the, the, over the next few weeks, we're going to just lay some groundwork that will really allow us to see uh, God's plan uh, come about, his provision for our lives and our families, and ultimately the joy in your and my heart to be fulfilled. The uh, Bible says, for the joy set before him, Christ endured the cross. There was a, a joy that was set before him, and truly what it was, we hear about um, its people people that were set before him, but really it was God's plan. It was what God had ordained him. Its fulfillment is only found and can only be found when you're doing what God has called you to do, what God has called you to do. And so this morning, I want to start the, this morning, the title of this series is House in Order. Um, and I want to start the, this morning uh, with this statement, and maybe we don't think about it enough, but I'm going to declare it to you. You are part of God's plan here on the earth. You are part of God's plan here on the earth. When you stop and think about that, you think about God, before I was ever born, He knew me and He formed me. And this is Jeremiah, right? But it's not just to Jeremiah. This is the book of Jeremiah. But before you were ever born, He knew you and He appointed you and He breathed breath into that flesh, this body that, you, that now exists. And He put in you gifts and callings and design and a uniqueness for his plan here on the earth it took to, to bring about his plan in as a plumber to bring about his plan as a truck driver to bring about his plan as a school teacher to bring about his plan as a stay-at-home mom to bring about his plan as a father to bring about his plan and whatever it is that you're doing to bring about his plan and I don't want to say whatever it is really that you're doing his plan might not be what you're doing. We have, to, we have to be able to receive that kind of gravity of a statement like, oh, wow, because I, I, I'm, I'm not my own. 1 Corinthians 6 tells us that you've been bought with a price, and we're to glorify God in our body, which is his. A lot of times we don't use this word slave um, as much as we should, but if you were to look in, in the New Testament and, and all through, if you were to look in Greek where it says uh, how he had some stewards, right? You remember the, the unfaithful, unrighteous steward? That word right there, you could translate it steward, you could translate it slave, you could translate it bondservant. And this is the word that the Lord uses for us. We, we, we so many times utilize that scripture about how are you being faithful with your talents, but we only see ourselves as servants. Because servant is a whole lot less mm, uh, constricting, especially in this 2024 uh, anti-authority day. Don't tell me what to do. I don't. Nobody tells me what to do but God. And the cool thing about that is, is, that's a good, good way out because nobody knows what God's telling you to do. <laughs> nobody tells me what to do but God. And so you're saying, in, this, in essence, when you say that, you're saying you listen to what God's telling you to do. But if you made that statement, you're not listening to what God tells you to do. Wow. That, and so we're going to talk this morning. This is going to be a foundational thing. And I want to, I want to go back just a two weeks or really three weeks um, ago uh, to a Wednesday night. And if you, I really believe this has been to me methodical uh, as far as laying some groundwork. And on a Wednesday night, we talked about wisdom and wisdom carves out. And then two weeks ago, we talked about there is no plan B. It was just a time of review of this last year. Uh, really, but for me more than anything, it was just that short portion of the message that there is no plan B, and you can't ask God to bless your Ishmael. And so because there's no plan B, let's get back to working on plan A. 
let's get busy, uh, like Abraham and his wife, they got busy imagining, right, and, and imagining, and imagine, and he, you imagining the promise of God will always move you to action, and, and they, a year later, gave birth to a son, Isaac, and they got to walk in the promise of God. And so it's not too late. Here he is, 100 years old, having the promise of God come about in his life. So it's not too late to walk in the promise of God. So wisdom, getting God's plan, and, and, and how he, he, wisdom carves out the plan of God. And so we talked about that on Wednesday. And then no plan B. There, you can't ask God to bless your Ishmael. That's called rebellion. And then because of that, we say, okay, Lord. And we saw that Abraham, he, he, he surrendered his life. He changed, God changed his name and, and made a declaration about who he was and, and, and who he would be. Uh, and, and, and he came into agreement with that. And he began to imagine and said, you know what? Against hope, I'm going to believe in hope. I'm going to believe in the picture that's in my heart more than what I see with my eyes. And so we get back to that. And so this morning, uh, with this, having established that, that you are here and you are part of God's plan here on the earth, we're going to look at how to partner with God's plan. How to partner with God's plan. This is just a, uh, we're not going to tell, tell you what the next step is. We're just going to establish today what it looks like for you and your house. This is the title of this morning's message. What does it look like for me, as for me and my house? As for me and my house. And you and I maybe have heard that quoted many times in Joshua. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But in order for you and I to say, as for me and my house, what Joshua said in that moment, he had to have greater regard for what God said than he did for his uh, other's view of who he was and who his house was. I'm going to say that again. In order to make that statement and actually do it, you're going to have to have greater regard for what God says than you do for what people or how people see you or what people think about you. Or what, let me say this, what you think about yourself. See, because this is one of those, or what you think yourself. So many times it's easy to say, <clears throat> as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. But, and this is one of these things that I'm not here to critique you. I'm, I'm here only to speak the truth to you. Just that's it. You, to lay it before you, just as Joshua did. You choose. You choose. And we're going to talk uh, this morning about what is, it, what, is our, what, is our, what is our choice really? Is it what I want to do or is it what he's asked me to do? Because your joy and your fulfillment will be found in doing and partnering with and coming under God's plan here on this earth for you and your family. Okay, so a few words that we're going to talk about, I want to just mention this morning, I want to, and so many times because of a past experience, there's a bad feeling associated with these, these words. Um, let's just throw one out there, authority. Like a lot of times it's like, oh, the pastor's going to talk about authority today. I don't know like about, but I don't know about that. Or, or maybe, maybe you've had an experience in the past, maybe in the church life, maybe not, on deliverance. Right, like some of you, the word deliverance would be like, "Oh yeah, I got delivered." Other of you would be like, "You know, we started, you know, casting out demons and just like handling snakes or something like that." And you're like, "I hope Pastor, you know, like you just have this bad idea because of some past experience at some friend's church or some moment." Or you could say this: tongues, 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 tongues. Like what? Like other tongues? Like oh, show bubble bubble? Or like what are we talking about here? Like all, all of a sudden, ha! You know, like what? What are, what or, or maybe that that same word that that being baptized in the Spirit brings just such a joy and a peace. But everybody's experience, depending on those words, can be can be words of just you know. Oh, if you're a wife, if you're a wife and, and, and mishandled, you might hear this word submit, and that could be a word that is ah, yuck, because of because of how it was used, because of how. Uh, again, words can be used, and your experience of those words can really mess with you, right? How about, well, here's one that really, it seems to always get a few things uh, stirred up, prosperity. Prosperity. Well, I don't know about that prosperity gospel. Well, well let me just give you a little bit of a newsflash. If there's contention around a word, and all of these words that I just used, they're biblical words, Bible words. These are Bible words. My Bible tells me so, words. 
If there is contention or, and, and, and confusion around the word, there must be some good in that. There must be some truth because the enemy doesn't argue with or, or contend with that which has no value. So these words, in this word, there's definitely some ditch, okay? But that's not in that word. There is, the, 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 in that word, there is truth and freedom. And if you'll know that truth, there'll be freedom or the, to, to, a release in you for, to exercise uh, submission, to exercise and walk in prosperity, to, to ha- ex- experience deliverance and have nothing holding you and having nothing holding your children and no spirit of or any curse or family curse holds you because you've been redeemed. Like you, you start looking at these things, it's like, wow, Lord, help us to hear different and hear from you these words. And so this morning, uh, we're going to talk about the word submission, submission. Submission and authority, you maybe, a lot of times this word gets such a bad rap is because it's preached in a healthy way or it's communicated in a healthy way. And that's where I tell you as a leader, submit to me. It's where a, a pastor tells the congregation to submit. It's where uh, a, 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 some leader, uh, principal of the school, submit, right? There's the, or your husband tells you, submit, woman, Right? Have you ever heard that? You know, we, I say that all the time in a joke, you know, uh, as a joke, just like, just for fun, you know, submit woman. Um, but just when we're messing, <laughs> messing around. And, uh, but but the, the truth is, anytime you talk about submission, it does, the person that, you, that is the leader isn't to be, it's unhealthy and not right if the leader, if the husband is to tell his wife to submit. The Lord is the one that's talking about this. We'll see that, we'll look here in a moment, but we'll see that the Lord is telling us about how all authority is from Him. And we're to submit to authority. It doesn't tell authority to tell, Austin, I'm, I'm the pastor here and you're the youth pastor. You better submit. And my car needs to be washed and vacuumed out too. <laughs> that doesn't happen. That's not healthy. It's wrong. It's actually wrong. It's actually abuse. Jesus never did that. The Lord never did that. The, we see he always lays before us life and blessing, death and cursing. He sets before us a choice. Joshua set before the people a choice. And so what, what's what we're talking about. Uh, the direction from the Lord is, is very clear, but it's still your choice. It's still my choice. And so submission is, I want, to, I want you and I to hear this word in, in two parts, and then we'll talk about submit here. But submission, submission, like you come under for a mission. Sub, like submarine, you come under, like covert, like you come under one that has a greater plan than you, or, or one that sees, or one that, let's say even this, one that God set over you. Someone, so you come under for a mission, and we're going to look at this word, and let's go here. And so I want to, I want to talk about this morning as we, as we look and we step forth and have a house in order, what it looks like to step in, because the enemy's going to fight you for the, the reason you're here. And so there's, we have to know that we're working with God, not against God. It's important that we work and partner with God, not against Him. That, that my step wouldn't be one of pride, because the Bible says he opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble, right? So we, if we're going to build a life, if we're going to have a house in order, the number one thing is we got to get in agreement with God, right? i got to get in agreement with God. What is he saying? What is he doing? Let's turn real quick to James chapter 4, verse 7. James 4, verse 7, and some good home reading um, would be James 4, um, maybe 4, 5 through, through 8. There's where it talking, talking about being double-minded, talking about where, uh, how, to, how to get God's, God's plan here on the earth in, or in your life um, and, and receive more grace, all right? More grace to you, all right? But here, just, we're just going to hit this right here this morning. Submit yourselves, submit woman. Submit congregation, submit citizen, submit student, submit who? You and I. This is talking to me. This is talking, you can't look over and you can't give your, your you know, the rib, the, you know, bruise the ribs of the one next to you. This is kind of more like, you know, double. I don't know if that really worked there. 
Um, but submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Submit to God, resist the devil, and we will flee. I want to I I identify and uh, <coughs> make me back up here. God over me put Satan under me. This is house in order. We're talking about things in order. God over me put Satan under me. God not over me put Satan over me. See, the, so many times we think that there's like Neapolitan. You know, you know, God sets before you life and blessing and death and cursing, but somehow we think there's, you know, perfect will, permissive will, totally out of the will. Like chocolate, vanilla, strawberry. Instead of life and blessing, I wish you were hot or cold. It doesn't, he said lukewarm. But we, somehow we think that there's like this middle ground that it's okay to be in our way, our, our idea, our thought. And that if I don't submit to God, then it's okay because I'm not really doing the devil's deeds, you know. But when I don't submit to what the Lord says, when I don't submit to God, then what happens is I don't just stand in the, in the middle. I actually come under the other. You can't serve, you either serve one or you serve the other. You'll see this principle all through the word. And so this is maybe a wake up for us to say, if I am not yielding to what the Lord directs or what I see in the, in the word or what he, in my heart, I'm in a sense opening the door or coming under the authority of the evil one who wants nothing but to steal, kill, and destroy from me, from you. From... So this is important because if we're doing two steps forward or, you know, this and then we're getting three steps backwards, all because we're halfway under God. Let me tell you, if I'm not all the way under, I'm not under. I, but I am judged according to what I know. The Bible says he that doesn't do what he knows is sin, and that pays something. All right? So, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. God, God over me puts Satan under me. Okay, this is huge. So let's think about this kingdom. The word submit means this. Uh, if you were to look it up, it means to place, to place or rank or arrange under. Somebody say rank. Not that kind of rank. But order, like lieutenant, captain. Like the, the word submit, it, you and I would recognize that in the kingdom of God, this is important that we would know this right now, and, and it's super basic. In the kingdom of God, there is rank. It just, it just says when we wrestle, Ephesians chapter 6 says we don't wrestle against, just against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of wickedness. If you were to look that up, all those are different. It, they, they describe different ranks or different levels of, of demons. Okay? Well, the same is true with the angels. There's different levels of angels. You have archangels, like overarching, what we know, Gabriel and Michael and, uh, help me out, um, Lucifer. Did you know Lucifer was an archangel? Did you know in Jude that the reason that, that, that he, when he came, that he couldn't rebuke Lucifer because he was on the same rank? Go look in Jude and you'll see that, uh, was it Gabriel came? No, not Gabriel. Michael said, the Lord rebuke you. I think it's Michael. But we, we only know of three names. There might be more, but we only know of three names of archangels, right? And so he said, the Lord rebuke you because he couldn't get out of line. He wasn't over him. He wasn't over him. You see this even in the prince of the, uh, when I was come, but the prince of Persia. In other words, there's, there's demonic uh, activity above cities. And now that you might go, ooh, okay, but it's true. It's true. You'll notice when you come to a different, if you're just, uh, maybe don't just even, no, not looking with these eyes, but check here. You'll notice in different places there might be a spirit of poverty over a place. Or, and I'm not calling everything a spirit. I'm talking about a spirit that, that rules in such a way that keeps heads down. Or, or maybe it's just a complete, um, uh, no, no stewardship. It might be there's a lot of dollars, but there's no stewardship. Right? You could be in a place that, 
um, you know, a place that they, that even the world says sin city, sin city. So there's something about that place that you go there and there's just this draw to just whatever will be will be because it'll stay here. There, there's just places like that. Okay. Anyway, um, but again, I want to go back to the word submit. So to place or to rank or arrange under. To place or arrange under. So let me, let me say it this way. Arranged for battle. So uh, this is, uh, in, in, the, in the word, this, this word submit is only used five times. Five times. And if you were to look this up, if you were to go, go, go get on your Google, okay, go to Bible Hub on the Strongs and click on this word, submit to the devil, or submit to God, rather, not the devil, resist the devil and he'll flee. But first and foremost, submit. So many times we're trying to risk the, resist the devil, but we're, you can't resist what you're submitted to. It's like trying to pick myself up. I can't do it as much as I try. Like I thought, I, I can lift 250 pounds. Got to pull these pants down. I can lift that, but I can't lift it because because it's what's holding me down. Like, wouldn't it be amazing if I could just pick? You can't sub, you can't resist what you're submitted to. So when you if you were to look this up, you'll find that. It, let's go to Ephesians just in, in our minds real quick, or just Ephesians. It says, uh, "Wives submit." Ephesians 5.21 and 5.26, likewise, women submit. When you look at that word and you see it like this, wives, get an arrangement for battle. Wow. There's a, a difference. Hey, submit to God. Be arranged for battle. There's a different approach. You understand that there is truly a contest, not only a contest, there's a war going on right now for your family. There's a war going on right now for this church. There's a war going on right now for your marriage. There's a war going on for your children. There's a war going on for your destiny because you're part of the plan of God here on this earth. And we have to make a switch and, and, and an understanding that there is a fight and we truly are in an army of the Lord. We have to make that switch. Otherwise, everything is just like, ah, da, 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 da. all the while, we're behind enemy lines. And there's casualties when we don't understand that we're actually in a battle. So arranged for battle. So every time we talk about the word submit or coming under today, let's remember and let's just write that down. You might put that in, the, in your Bible, arranged for battle. Submit to God. I'm arranged for battle. When I'm arranged for battle and I come under God, then guess what? He also provides for me. You remember this centurion? I too am one under authority. I say to this one, go. He, he, the centurion didn't wonder if he's going to have the troops that, are, that he's going to need or the provisions or the rations or whatever it was because who he was under was taking care of that. So many times we're having these financial battles, mental, all these... Uh, and you and I, if we come under and we're arranged for battle, wait, Lord, my God shall supply all of my needs. This is important. Okay? So, again, submit. Um, uh, let's go. 1 Corinthians 14, 33. 1 Corinthians 14, 33. Now, this is a, a, a word that you maybe heard um, th this passage talking about in the church when, when there's just maybe chaos in spiritual things, Right? But this, I, I want to establish this truth. As much as God, he is a God of order, not a God of disorder. Okay? This right here. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as it, as it is in all the churches. That word confusion there, it was this, really, anarchy. That's, God is not a God of anarchy. God is a God of, of rank. So, in other words, the general, uh, uh, the lieutenant doesn't come and tell the general what to do, and the lieutenant doesn't get 12 lieutenants to try to overtake the general. That's anarchy. We saw that in heaven when Lucifer tried to, like, we got to see this. Where When we look in James, when we hear the, the word about how there's, uh, we'll, we'll get there and actually look there probably in, in a moment, but where we see where there's strife and it says, and, and, and selfish ambition, there's disorder or there's confusion. That word is actually anarchy. Where you and I come out of rank, 
where we come out of rank or we come out and we want to go after what we want instead of coming under God. There's a, there's a, a movement where we come out and, 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 and so insubordination. And, and how many of you know in the military, insubordination matters? Again, we're talking about in a marriage, insubordination. We're talking about how this is actually established, and it's to be established first by fathers, and then it's to be passed down to children. This is interesting how children are to learn to, 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 sub, to submit or to obey your mother and father in the Lord. Honor them, right? This is the first commandment with promise. It'll go well with you if you'll learn, if we'll learn right now as a little child, if we'll teach our child to obey and to do what you might not want to do, if we'll learn that, how many of you know submission doesn't ever even really take place as long as I'm just fully in agreement? Oh, that's where I want to go. You, you, you're not following any, any order, are you? Well, I thought it would be this way. I want to go this way. You know? And, and, and so we, we move ourselves into a place of disorder or anarchy or insubordination. And how many of you know if you are on a military front, it, which we are, which we are, and there's insubordination or anarchy and upheaval. And within its own ranks, there's a war going on. The enemy doesn't have to work so hard. And his job is made a whole lot easier to produce mass casualties. So let's go into a marriage here. Okay? There's a war going on. You hear this, well, I might not be the head, but I'm the neck. Okay? In other words, I, turn the he- I tell the head what to do. That's anarchy. That's insubordination. That's, not, that's outside of the, the flow of God. Now, the, I'm not talking anything about the value of women right now, which is incredible, okay? It, 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 but we're, we're different. Different roles. Different graces. Different, and, and God arranged, again, remember, submit. He arranged for battle. It's not good that man be alone. We go back all the way to Genesis. And so he said, let me make a help meet to, to bring alongside Adam. The one, and that word there would be the one who sees the enemy coming. You know, let me say it this way. Eyes in the back. Like, so, so you might not be out front, but you got the eyes in the back. You know, it, it's a different role. It, it's equally as value. Why? Because it's not about your call. It's about... His plan, we're going to reestablish this right now, that it's not about your call, it's about His plan. And, and you and I are part of God's plan here on the earth. So our plan, whatever He's called us to do, it's equally important because He saw and deemed it necessary to place you here and to place me here for His plan. So somebody say, not my call, not my call. His, plan. His plan. So this is huge this is where there's uh, uh, everything he can do, I can do better. There's a Nike commercial that came out probably 10 years ago. And it was t- talking about, the ri- really, it's the rise of equality rights, okay, or this value every, in, of women to try to, in a sense, uh, come up and be here. But there, there's difference. There, there, that, it doesn't work that way. Everything I can do... Or he can do, I can do better. Everything he can, I can do better than him is how the, 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 the mantra went. But that, that, that would be two people doing the same thing. And so there's a hole. And so who comes in the hole? Who comes in with the back door when the back door is left open? The enemy comes in. And so we think it's just some, this, in, this innocent thing that shows to bring equality of, of women's rights. But really what it is is to get people off their post and out of arrangement that God arranged for battle. We see this happen in government. We see this happen in our communities where there's not, we're not taking a stand and changing from the inside out. We're just like a group of Christians that just only do what we think is right. Uh, this is this is something that it may be kind of a little bit of it's not a soapbox. This is just true. The church, for the most part, when it comes to political authority, we do what God says do, or so what we think is right, and what we don't think is right, or what doesn't line up with us, we have a lot to say about. But if we would come under authority 
the way that we're supposed to, we'd realize and we'd come on and be a part of God's plan, we, there, would be this, there would be people rising up in leadership and changing things from the inside instead of just going, well, that doesn't apply to me. I'm not doing that. That's stupid. Because now the rules would be righteous. Because the, the Bible says that people rejoice when the righteous rule. Well, why are the righteous not ruling? Because we've not, we've not established the fact that all authority is from God. All authority is from God. President Joe Biden, from the Lord. Uh, you you want to hear that again? The teacher that you just despise. Because the Bible says that, that, that the Lord raises up and sets down. You remember Jesus? He said in John 19, 11, he said that, that he was talking to, uh, I think it was Pontius Pilate, I believe. Anyway, he was standing before, and, and, and he said, um, well, guess what? It's not your fault. Because the only power you have is what was given to you. Can you imagine Jesus saying this to like the king? Jesus answered, you have no power at, at, at me at all unless it had been given to you from above. In other words, he's saying that like the authority that's placed is from above. And, and you know, sometimes from above, it, it goes further above. Okay, And so sometimes it's not God's plan that that person be in that place, but because God's plan was to have somebody else be in a place, but they're not under God's plan. They're doing their own plan. God's So righteous should be going forth and applying themselves and being out in the community, not just here in the church. Like how, I, how you and I worship the Lord and as we seek the Lord, it shouldn't just, it shouldn't just only be here. All right, let's keep going here. So James, um, again, James 3.16, we, we mentioned that. Who is wise among, un, un, James 3.13 through 16, who is wise and understanding among you, let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. So if you're wise, you're going to have meekness or you're going to have humility or you're going to come under what God says. And it goes on to say, but, but if you have bitter envy, or self-seeking in your heart. If there's bitterness or jealousy or self-seeking in your heart, do not boast or lie against the truth. In other words, those are two things that we lie about. Do you want that? No, I don't really want that. Are you doing that for you? No, I'm not doing that for you. Don't lie. Those are the two things. There's two things there, and you'll find that we lie about those things when that's actually what's going on on the inside. Why are you doing that? Because this is what I want. The, he said, but he says this, but if you, uh, next verse, but such wisdom... Okay? Again, it's a, it's a voice, it's a word that is telling you how to build something to get what you want. But wisdom, by wisdom, a house is built. You want a house that's built on a rock, you want a house that's built on the sand. Both built a house, one's going to remain. It says, but by, by what, such wisdom does not come from heaven, but it's earthly, undemonic, or unspiritual, even demonic. Next verse. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find anarchy there you find insubordination. You don't, you're no longer, you, you move yourself out from under what God would say, and you go try to discover it yourself. And every evil practice. How can that be? Isn't that interesting? Submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee. If I come under God, I stand over the enemy. If I don't stay under the Lord, I come under, and I actually stand above the Lord. This is where there's a lot of scriptures that we don't want to really, you know, just kind of skip over that one. Anybody, anybody know about those besides me? You know, like you see that, you're like, oh, I don't know if that really means that. Because that would mean this. But that's what that means. That's what that means. Let's keep going here. So we're going to read, um, we're going to read we, uh, in Joshua and then also in Deuteronomy this morning. And then we're going to jump back to authority. But a lot of times, you and I, um, and especially in this day and age, we hear about the promises of God. All of his promises are, amen, they are. So we sing about promises. We teach about promises. We teach about prosperity. We teach about all of the things, healing, all of these things that are yours in Christ. They're in Christ, in, but they're in Christ they're, they're, as you come under Christ. This is, how, this is how they work. But, but we, don't, we don't lay about, about the ground rules. So I want to just, how many of you know the Old Testament is written for our example? The Bible tells us this. It's written for our example. And so have you ever like maybe went to, um, 
an amusement park and your kids are maybe a little bit older or maybe you get to uh, maybe the mall or you get somewhere where you're not going to be with your kids. But your kids are just old enough. Maybe it's the water park. Maybe it's the Alma Aquatic Park, right? Your kids are just old enough that they can do their thing, right? But you have to lay some ground rules. And maybe I'm, I have, I'm a father of three boys, and so maybe I have to lay a few more ground rules because I've been known to be a rule breaker, okay? I mean, like, in the name of fun, right? Like, push the envelope a little bit, like how many people can go down the slide at a time kind of guy, right? Like at the Alma Water Park I, when I was young. I, not anymore. I just don't ride the slide because then I would probably want to go down with a lot more people, right? This, I, I like to have fun. I like to, and so in the name of fun, sometimes, sometimes I can be known to break a rule. Anybody like to just get on the gas just a little bit sometimes? Just sometimes. Not every time, but just sometimes. Like the, the, It's a nice day. You just like to put it up there quick. And if a police officer was there, you'd get pulled over for excessive acceleration. It just feels good. When the engine's warm, you know. Okay, thank you. I got a couple honest folks. It just There's a few things that you know that it's just like, oh, that, that's, that's just good. But. If the police officer's there, how many of you know you're not stepping on the gas like that? So there's some ground rules. So, but if you go to, let's say, the amusement park or the aquatic park, for us and our our boys, because sometimes they like to have a little bit too much fun, um, and she, my wife probably tells me this stuff too, that we're going to lay some ground rules. How many of you ever heard some ground rules? If you're gone and you're home, your kids are home alone, you'll lay some Ground rules. This is, and so there is a promised land that the children of Israel are about to step in. It had been 40 years. Everybody was waiting. We took a 12-hour road trip. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? No. But we got there. Joshua is stepping across the Jordan with, with all of these people. But hey, guys, before we go in, have you ever heard this statement? Hey, guys, before we go in, you go into somebody's house, take off your shoes. Before we go in, there's some ground rules. And so we're going to look at how Joshua laid some ground rules before they went in. Okay? So here we are. And this is that statement of Joshua chapter 24, uh, 15. But we're going to start in verse 13. So he says this. So he reviewed all of the history of, uh, if you go in Joshua 24, 1 through 13, you'll see that he reviews history of how God was took your fathers from here. He goes all the way back to Abraham and, and to, uh, Abraham's father and how he, he found a people and all of this and how he brought about and Isaac was brought about and how he took him to Egypt and now out and how he brought him out through the Red Sea, all this stuff. And now we're in verse 13. He says, so I gave you a land on which you did not toil and, I, and cities that you did not build. And now you live in them and eat from vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. Now, therefore, now, therefore, Okay, uh, and really, and really, just uh, the Deuteronomy would, would, would have been written, or at least what these two pieces I'm going to talk about would have been written right before. Okay, right before, but just for us to, to lay some foundation here, I wanted to go, go Joshua first. It says this: Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve Him in, sincer- in sincerity and truth. Cast aside the gods of your father that you served beyond the Euphrates and in Egypt and served the Lord. But if it is unpleasing, if it is undesirable, if it's undesirable, that word there is ra, it actually R-A-H, ra, which, which actually means evil, if it's evil to you. Let me define that ra, which means evil or bad. If serving the Lord is bad, unpleasant, gives you pain, Unhappy, misery, hardship. There's the scripture in Psalms that says your your words, your 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 boundaries fall for me in pleasant places. But if 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 you see something in the word you need to forgive, meh. That's undesirable. That's a hardship for me. I don't see that the word that what God has said is for my good. Wow. Then you won't serve him then you're going to come under, you're going to come out from under the Lord, and you're going to serve something else. You, that's what you're going to actually do. You're going to serve. You can't serve one or the other. You are serving one or you're serving the other. And what you serve has authority over you. So how do I know if I'm serving the Lord? He has authority over me. 
well, how do I know if I am going to serve the Lord? And it's going to be more than lip service where I say, well, I only do what God tells me to do. Right here, Ra. When you hear about, I mean, it could be one of a hundred things that you see in the Word. About, uh, about priorities. It could be uh, about the words of your mouth. About uh, blessing and not cursing. You could just go to 1 Corinthians 13. You could, it could be about money. It could be about giving, tithing. It could be about giving alms. It could be how you treat the per- guy in prison when you visit him. When you, or, or the widow. But you, we, These things matter. How, what do I say when I see what the word says? In those places, I'll come out from under the Lord if it's rough. If it's R-A-H, rough. If it's evil or undesirable. It's not what I want. And so... There's not really accountability except for between you and the Lord. And in this day and age, to to preach accountability, well, it might not be the best way to gather crowds. To preach about submission and coming under authority might be, but see, if we're going to go back to the foundation, if we'd get back under the Lord, we we would be coming from this way up instead of having a a broken system where we're trying to correct it from the outside and we're always trying to choose what's right to us to get it back. I hope I'm making sense there. But if it's unpleasing, uh, in the sight of the, if it's undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors serve beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you're living. As for me and my house, he, he was very bold here. I don't care what you do. I'm making it very clear what I'm doing and what my house is doing. So he starts with the fathers. He starts with the, 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 there's a declaration to your children. You look at even Abraham commanding his children. You look at, this is how it's to be instilled by the fathers. And we're going to talk about this and the strength of a father in the home. In in Malachi chapter 4, it talks about how God's, as as the Lord's return approaches, he's going to turn the hearts of the fathers toward the children. I believe you're, you're seeing that now, that there's an awakening and a re-validating a re, uh, of the voice of, of, of the man in the home and to their children, and there's a strength, and there's a, a submission, there's an arrangement for battle that even the women are seeing in the church go, of just this alignment for the assignment for the battle where there's not like, it's just, it's like this, this just together. Together, under the same head, you know, there, there's just this picture. There's this picture, and, and he's turning the hearts of the fathers to children. And, and, and so here's Joshua declaring to the people what it's going to be. This takes boldness, by the way. There, there was a, a million people plus that were going in, and he's making a declaration. This is what we're doing, but I, whatever you're doing, you're going to have to make a decision because I've seen the idols and I've walked by and oh, sh- whoop, whoop. did you hear? There was plenty of talk. There was plenty of murmuring about to, about Aaron and about Moses. Can I tell you there was plenty of murmuring about Joshua? Be strong and be of good courage. Why? Because I'm with you. Don't be afraid of the people. I mean, this is important. There's plenty of talk. There's plenty of things. And he had to make this declaration. He had to be strong and say, this is what I'm going to do for me and the Lord. And then you hear lip service from the next people, and then he calls them to the carpet. Okay, let's keep going here. So he says this. But if serving the Lord, let's go to the next one. Uh, It says, then the people answered, far be it from us. Like, we're going to serve the Lord. Come on, guys. All right, everybody, come on. We're serving the Lord. Like, we're we're beyond church. We're, We're Christians. We... We go to church. We're, we're serving the Lord. We serve the Lord. Come on. We serve the Lord. Come on, everybody. Don't we serve the Lord? I know. But we serve the Lord. We serve the Lord. I know about the arrangement in battle, but we serve the Lord. Like This is, again, this is coming under what God said. And he says, far be it from us for, uh, to forsake the Lord and serve, to serve other gods. So he's like, oh, we're not going to serve other gods. Next verse. It was the Lord, our God, uh, Lord, our God himself who brought us out and our parents up out of Egypt from the land of slavery and performed the great signs before our eyes. Yeah, just like you told us. You just told us all about this in 1 through 12. Like, it was the Lord. It was our God that did this, right? 
uh, out of slavery, performed great signs. He protected us the entire journey and among all the nations through which we traveled. Next verse. And the Lord drove out before us all the nations, including the Amorites who lived in the land, who served the Lord, because he is our God. He's our God. And so then the next, I love this next verse. Joshua said, okay, uh, you, you're not able to serve the Lord. He is a holy God. Holy, set apart, set apart. You can't have that and that and that. You can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't say, well, I'm submitted to God and I'm resisting the devil, but I'm going to continue to do this. Or I'm not going to do this. We're fighting against ourselves. The enemy's not even working and the door's open. So this is so important. All we're really talking about this morning is establishing Who are you? Who am I serving? Who am I under or arranged for battle with? Because if I am arranged for battle and I can only be with God or I come with the enemy, I'm actually working against the Lord. I love that even the scripture in Proverbs talking about the lazy man, the slothful man, how he's the brother to the destroyer. Because I'm not working on what God wants me to be working on. Because I'm not putting my hand. The destroyer, I'm I'm kin, I'm brother. So I'm actually partnering with the enemy by just not being active on what God has asked me to be working on. What has God called you to? This goes back to plan B, right? Plan A, plan B, this message. What has God called you to that, that we settled for an Ishmael that we are no longer working on? Anyway, so Joshua said, the people, you're not able to serve the Lord right now. Uh, Because he's a holy God, and he's a jealous God. And he's not going to forgive your rebellion and your sins. Next verse. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, he will turn and bring disaster on you and make an end to you. God, God is so mean. Like, God is, can you believe that? Like, I thought we served a, a God of love. Like, what, don't you know God loves? Like, God loves, bro, bro. What would Jesus do, bro? He probably would go after the one of the 99 and like, these look like the one to me. This is not. We we get this idea of an angry God when yet he the whole time is patient and allowing choice, allowing choice. And sometimes we don't realize how much our choice affects us. Uh, Be not deceived. God is not mocked for what a man sows in life. He will reap. Well, uh, what about the blood of Jesus that washes us and cleanses us from all unrighteousness? Yeah, absolutely. Salvation it, it is the work of the Lord. But you and I are also to be working out our salvation. There should be an outworking of what it looks like to follow Christ. There is a truth about picking up your cross and following him. There is a truth about you've been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body, which is his. There is a truth in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. You know, I beseech you to offer, you know, come on. In view of God's mercies and his kindness. But God, God is just. He can't, he can't, in Proverbs, if you've been reading recently, it says how evil it is for a, a, a judge to declare something unjust righteous. Like to give a reward for what was evil. God says that's not going to work because he doesn't operate that way. So here, the Lord, the Lord is talking through Joshua, the leader, before, what are we, what are we doing right now? We're laying ground rules. Before you go in, or right as soon as you're going into the promised land. And he says, "Turn, bring, he'll, he'll bring disaster on you and make an end of you after he has been good to you. Right? Let's go to the next verse. But the people said to Joshua, no, 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 we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to serve the Lord. Next verse. Then Joshua said, you are witnesses against yourself that you have chosen to serve the Lord. Yes, we are witnesses, they replied. And so then Joshua tells them what to do next. Uh, then throw away those gods. Oh, bro. You remember like there used to be this time like they would burn the CDs or these books or the porn magazines or like there was a time like you'd actually like at camp, like at camp. I remember hearing about these things at camp like people would burn this stuff. I'm like, how did you bring that to camp? Like it says not to bring that stuff. But as for me... uh, it's okay for me. 
But here he's saying, then, now then, Joshua said, okay, you all are serious? Let's put your money where your mouth is. You're going to serve the Lord? You're going to do what the Lord said? Let's put your money where your mouth is. Bring me your gods. Let's burn them. Get your foreign gods that are among you and yielded your hearts and, you, and yield your hearts to the Lord. Now move from that and yield your hearts to the Lord. Throw away the foreign gods that are among you and yield. You know what that means? Willing. That means not undesirable, but yield to the Lord. And he says, uh, the, um, yield your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. Uh, let's, keep, let's go all the way to the end. And the people said to Joshua, we will serve the Lord our God and obey him. So they did that. And on that day, Joshua made a covenant before the people. And there, I think this is so, so big. He made a covenant before him and he puts a stone down uh, and made to reaffirm them the decrees and the laws. This is what the Lord says. This is what the Lord says. This is what the Lord says. You said you're going to serve him and you said it's desirable that you're yielding. This is what the Lord says. And Joshua recorded these things in the book of the law of God. Then he took a large stone and set it there under the oak near the holy place of the Lord. Next verse. See, he said to the people, this stone is a witness. It's a reminder. I I think it would be good for us to make a stone and a reminder about when we agree as a family and as, as as, as, as a family. As for me and my house, what does it look like to to serve the Lord, like maybe it has to do with forgiveness. Hey, we're not talking about that anymore. And we're going to make this, we're going to make this mark. We're going to make this. So, so honey, you can talk to me and tell me if I'm talking about that, buddy, you can tell me. Like we're as a family, we're making, there's this stone of what it looks like where we know when, when the Lord deals with us and we have to make a declaration, you know, as, as a family, if, if it might be, if we're going to forgive grandma, right? Hey guys, to the whole family. We're forgiving grandma, and we're not talking about that anymore in our house. As the, as, as the leader, you make that declaration, hey, guys, uh, mom and dad haven't been, we haven't, we've been taking the care of, of the economy and finances, and we've stopped giving the way we should, generosity, and even you've seen it as it comes to you. And um, we're, we're, we're making that adjustment as a family. We're serving the Lord. We're giving in that way. Like, there, there you'll see that you make the declaration to your kids, hey, boys, uh, the way that I've been talking uh, and, and been bitter towards towards Mama about whatever it might be, I just want to apologize, and I want to make it clear it's not okay for Dad to talk that way, and it's not okay for you to talk that way. And you make us, you make us, you make something that it calls to your remembrance that I stay under or arranged for battle, because we are at war, guys. We're at war. We're at war. And we're at war in the spirit. And I'll tell you, even in the natural, we're a lot closer to war than you think. And if you think that you think that right now that things can be tough in life, put yourself in a war. You bet we got to get the spiritual stuff in order so that we can stand in a day of adversity. Oh, I'm not trying to prophesy a war. I'm telling you, we're in a time, in a season, where all around us, and the war might just even be here right now, but it, it, I'm telling you, it's, all, it's not just here, it's because it's all around us, even naturally. Yeah. And in just a moment, this is not to produce fear or, or, or to speak, in just a moment, America, just like the same way it was on Pearl Harbor, we could be sitting here, and tomorrow, we're called up that quick or everything's everything that was and even your goals and what you thought I'm going to push toward this and I can't wait to go on this vacation to Maui you ain't going no Maui there's no Maui there's not like there's there's called sustain or called so let's learn to be thankful right now too and let's make sure that we're taking our stand where we're supposed to be. And let's make sure we're not fighting against one another when we're supposed to be fighting the enemy. Let's make sure we're submitted and arranged for battle. 
and before we start claiming to go into the promised land and all the promises of God that we want to walk in and we want to stay in, let's make sure we truly are under the Lord and where he tells us to throw away some idols, let's throw them away. Let's make a monument where there needs to be a monument and make a, so put us and call us to the carpet, call us to remembrance and say, are you going to do what you said to do? Because I hear you talking about them again. I hear you saying this again, even within, within spouses. Make, put a stone up, a witness against us, a witness against us. Can I say it's not a witness against you? Can I say it's a witness against us? Like I'm preaching this to us. It matters what we word we come under. We, we get arranged for battle. And, um. And so the last verse there is uh, the stone of witness against Joshua. Dismiss the people, each to his own inheritance. Woo, that's cool. So they all got to go in to their inheritance. They had already divided the lands and said, you get this tribe. You, or you, this tribe gets this area. This tribe gets that area. Okay. Uh, let's go to, now to Deuteronomy. I'm sorry. It, it's, uh, I'm believing it's getting there. It's 1135. We're going to get to the end this morning. So Deuteronomy chapter 10 um, Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses, starting in verse 11. Then the Lord said to me, get up, get up, and continue on your journey ahead of the people that they may enter and possess the land that I, they, that I swore to their fathers to give them. Verse 12. And now, O Israel, what does the Lord your God ask of you but to fear the Lord your God by walking in his ways, to love him, to serve him? To serve the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and to keep his commandments and statutes of the Lord that I'm giving you this day for your own good. Can you see how this is the exact same recount or the same time what's going on? He says, what can I ask you to do except for you to serve the Lord? And the, it sounds a lot like Matthew, doesn't it? Matthew 22. Let me re- reread that again. Oh, Israel, what da- now does the Lord ask of you but to fear the Lord your God by walking in all his ways, to love him? To serve the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and to keep his commandments and statutes of the Lord that I'm giving you this day for your own good. Let me read Matthew chapter 22. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, or with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it, that you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two hang all of the law and the prophets. So here in Deuteronomy... You actually are seeing Matthew 22. You're going to see just a little bit further down, he starts talking about what you do to the foreigner, which is the neighbor. We didn't know that the Lord was kind of the same yesterday, today, and forever. I thought he was this evil God in the Old Testament and this loving God in the New Testament. Like his ways haven't changed. He just made a way when there was no way through Jesus because we couldn't make it. The way to get there is still the same. It's righteous righteousness his way it's his can i say it's his way it's his way or the high it's like my way or the high it's his way or hell still it's just that we couldn't live up to the way the law was given to us to show us our weakness so jesus came and made the way for us and without sin so that we could call upon the name of jesus to be saved instead of our own works so the way to get there is still the same it's the way of righteousness and so you see this, he's, Matthew 22 is all the way back in Deuteronomy? Yeah. Wow, this is so cool. Behold, verse 14, to the Lord your God belong the heavens, even the highest heavens, and everything in the earth is his. Yet the Lord has set his affection on your fathers. Yep, but the Lord has set his affection. Um, let me, I, I lost my spot here. I'm going to pick back up in 14. Behold the Lord your God. Behold, to the Lord your God belong the heavens, even the highest heavens, and the earth and everything in it. Yet the Lord has set his affection on your fathers and loved them. And he's chosen you. He's chosen you. You've got to hear that. Their descendants after them, above all the people, even to this day. So now circumcise your hearts. Cut away. The cutting away of your heart. Check, check your heart. Come into agreement in your heart, therefore, you, and stiffen your necks no more. For the Lord your God is the God of gods, and he is the Lord of lords, the great, the mighty, the awesome God, showing no partiality, and he accepts no bribe. He executes justice for the fatherless and widow, and he loves the foreigner. 
giving him food and clothing. So you must also love the foreigner, since you yourselves were foreigners in the land of Egypt. Love your neighbor. Do unto others. Wow. Matthew 22. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength. Then here we are. Love your neighbor. So he's, he's laying these ground rules of what it looks like and how he's the only God. He's the only one that is the only one. So there's one place that you get direction. There's one place that you serve. There's one place. And he's laying it out. Love the Lord and how you're to treat one another. Hmm. Verse 19. So you must also love the foreigners since you yourselves are foreigners in the land of Egypt. Verse 20. You are to fear the Lord your God and serve him. Hold fast to him and take your oaths in his name. He is your praise and he is your God. Who has done these things for you? Great and awesome wonders that your eyes have seen. Your fathers went down to Egypt, 70 in all. And now the Lord, your God, has made you as numbers as the stars in the sky. Before you go in, let me just remind you. Before you go in, if you're going to go in, you're going to have to choose who you're going to serve. And this is how you're going to serve him. He, he just laid it out. Love him with all your mind, all your, and, and let your yes be by him. In other words, this. I'm not here to call you to the carpet and to hold you account. You're held accountable because you're, you're swearing by the name of the Lord. You put, you put your hand on the Bible. Remember, like in, there used to be this thing that you put your hand on the Bible in the courtroom. I think they might still do it. And you're supposed to swear on, on the Bible. In other words, that you're going to give an oath that, ha, that, that God would strike in a sense like, He said, let your oath be on God. So if you're going to serve the Lord, I only do what God tells me to do. Or tell yourself the truth and say, "Uh, you know, serving the Lord, it doesn't really seem desirable to me. Okay, okay. So, okay. So let me just make this statement. Choose this day whom you're going to serve. This is, there's in a sense a land in the, a line in the sand being drawn. I, I believe in the kingdom of God. Who are you going to serve? You say this, put your hand. Now tell me who you're going to serve. You're going to serve the Lord? I mean, what about the scripture? If you forgive me, if you can't forgive your brother, how can your father in heaven forgive you? What about that scripture? Do you remember that scripture? Does anybody remember some of these hard things? It matters what we do when the word of God comes to us, if I'm going to come under his word or if I'm going to, if anarchy is going to rule. The cool thing about it is when you've been born again, the love of God and the spirit of God, the helper, he comes and takes up residence on the inside. So all you have to do, it's not about a matter of might or strength, because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. All that is a matter of is will. What will you do? What do you desire? I desire, as for me and my house, we're going to yield, we're going to serve the Lord. And as I see, and as the Lord comes to me, I'm not afraid of it. I'm not afraid of where I'm at. I just know the Lord is my teacher in the Holy Spirit. He's my guide. And when he brings his word to me and reminds me of things that he said, I make, I'm, I got a tender heart. No longer am I hard in heart. No longer am I stiff neck. No, I'm, I'm, I'm yielded in this moment, being yielded, tender to the Lord, to, to yield. Because if I'm tender to the Lord to yield, can I tell you, having a house in order, sometimes having a house in order is the fact that you're not at home at that time because you were yielded and tender to the Lord on those 13 other things and the Lord had you somewhere else and you were preserved. I just talked to somebody just the other day or just yesterday uh, about, uh, we were just there eating Mexican and then a car came through. We were just there a little bit uh, earlier and this wasn't about being yielded to the Lord but I think this is Part of God's preserving you and me. The car comes through, kills somebody in the booth where we were just sitting. And we're not there. We would have been rarely hurt, if not dead. It matters our tenderness to the Lord. We're talking about tenderness and serving the Lord. We're talking about a range for battle. We're talking about being able to hear a command and hear God's word as a command. 
We have to start today. If our house is going to come in order, I have to start hearing God's word as a command. If I'm going to be ready for battle. I'm not going to get to the rest of my notes today. We're going to pick up there uh, in, in, the week, in the weeks to come. If I'm going to, if you and I are going to, we're going to be a re ready for battle. If you and I and our houses are going to be making advancement for the Lord. If we're going to be we're not wrestling against one another. If we're not going to be, if we're going to be in line and have heavens flow in our families. We have to move the word of God, the Bible, back to the place of authority and command in our hearts. As for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. This morning in, in our serve team huddle, Pastor Evan was talking about uh, love and, and reading from this book. And, and, uh, and it was a book called uh, Love, Your Way to Victory. And he, she was reading in, in the book and recounting the story. And he said, I just purpose to do what the Bible tells me. <laughs> so it could say this. We, we, we sing this song a lot. Jesus loves me. This I know. So how about this one? You can throw whatever one that the Holy Spirit's bringing to you right now because everyone's dealing with something different. Everyone. But it's not uncommon. Like somebody's been there before. But it could say, I forgive this I know. Like, like whatever it is, the Bible tells me so. It was a command of the Lord. I too am one under authority. And the Lord talks about this. He, he said he commanded or commended the faith of that centurion. And he said, this man, all he had to hear was a word. All he had to hear was a word because he was under a word. They're coming a time where the words of God, the words are spirit, let me tell you. We just started a, a podcast here just recently. And we were talking about words. But words are spirit. And there, there's coming a time, and I believe we're just entering that now, where you're gonna, you and I are going to have to recognize the power of our words, and all we need is a word and a release of a word to change. And at that very moment, just as that centurion, because of faith, because he too was under authority, great faith, again, we talked about this, it's not about mm, trying to believe, it's willing to come under. Great faith comes by, if you have ears to hear, let them hear what the Spirit of God is saying. He said, my words are spirit and life. The life of God to you and me comes by you and I being willing to hear spirit words. And then when we are willing to hear his words, you'll find that our words will also be willing to have words released. And that just like that centurion, at, the, at that very hour, his servant was made well. I'm telling you, there, I'm telling you, what I'm telling you is the Bible. There's a whole lot more in the Bible than just salvation through faith in Christ. There's the promises of who you are, or there's the identity of who you are in Christ. There's promises. There's a way and, uh, that you and I are to live. There is, in a sense, steps for the righteous to live by faith. It's not just to get born again. It's that here and now that we would be positioned and part of and under authority and arranged for battle for God's plan here on this earth. You are here on the earth for God's plan. Let's be aligned. And if not, let's make sure we say and let's not deceive our children that we're serving the Lord and all the while we're not. This is to fathers. This is to families. Don't lie to your kids because you, of who you're serving. Don't lie to them. Don't lie to them. And put a bad name of God in your children's hearts. And God getting blamed for things and you blaming God for things and the whole while you're not submitted. And submission is not about hardship. It's all about yielding to divine order and heaven's strength. Heaven's strength in my life. Heaven's strength in my marriage. You'll find that even the little things, shut that off. 
Well, it doesn't say that. Where's scripture and verse on that? I don't know, but we're supposed to shut that TV show off. And that, that TV show was going to just whisper words into your husband or whispered words into your children about some chaos, crazy, or whisper something that would cause an affair, or whisper something that would change their identity, or whisper something. And all it was was you and I receiving because we've come under a word and we had a tender heart, and we just said, we need to shut that off. And young people, you preserve somebody's life because you go, hey, hey, we shouldn't be talking about that right now because you're bold enough at the gym to say, hey, y'all, we shouldn't be talking about that right now. And you replace it with something the Lord says and be bold enough to open your mouth. And be bold enough to open your mouth in that moment and the Lord will fill it. Be the Joshua. As for me and my house, I don't know about you, but I, I said I'm a Christian. I don't know about you, but I said I'm serving the Lord. And you know what that does? It rips somebody up, pulls them up, and sets them up. Who knows if just that turn would, would allow them to, where they were falling back, instead put that foot here, and it was just like they got that momentum, and now they're standing in that place of, of fulfillment and, and, and arranged the way that God designed them to be here on this earth. Step up. Come under. I believe this is a, a calling up. But really, this is just a really foundational message that is even peeling back years of our Christianity and saying, where am I? Whose am I? And as for me and my house, are we serving the Lord? Man, some of the greatest times are times of reflection. Adjustments. Thank God for mirrors. Mirror the word to get things right. Before you go out, before you go in. Amen. Let's stand this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Somebody say it. God is good. He has good plans for me. God is good. His plans for me are good. God's plans for me are good. Say it. Continue to say it like you believe it. God's plans for me are good. He's prepared good things for me to walk in. He's prepared good things for me to walk in. I'm under his authority. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Father, thank you for these people under your authority. We just we thank you for this time as and we thank you for the ministry of your Holy Spirit to be working in our hearts. Lord, every word that went forth today, we just apply the blood of Jesus over it. We thank you that not, they won't be plucked up. It won't fall upon hard hearts. But Father, I thank you that it would uh, go within and it would be tended and it would bear much fruit. Lord, thank you for the steps and the conversations that need to be had in the days to come with our friends, with our spouses, of what does it look like to be arranged for battle, to come under, to submit. Lord, I thank you for a healing of even that word submission in the hearts of, of wives and out of the words uh, and, and the communication from, from husbands. Just the arrangement. Lord, I'm thanking you and I'm asking you for the alignment and the arrangement in marriages. Strong to do battle. Strong to raise children. Strong to command. And to be salt and light in this generation. I just speak over marriages right now, a, a unity in, the, in marriages. If you're married and you're standing next to your husband or your wife, I want you to grab hands. If, you're not, if they're not here and you're serving, I want you just to receive this. One. One heartbeat. One vision. God's plan. You can have it. God's plan. Unity and clarity. I just bind confusion and broken hearts and bitterness in the name of Jesus. I thank you for the unveiling of false stories by the light of your word. Holy Spirit, illuminate 
and we just tear down those strongholds in the name of Jesus. I tear down that stronghold and that spirit of fear that would declare uh, to you that you're not good enough, that you're leaving, that you no longer satisfy me. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus, and I say, bow. And I declare to you, together, start to finish. We're together, start to finish. And as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Father, I thank you for filling every man and uh, with the wisdom from you, with the strength to simply inquire, the commun- just the clarity, just simply inquire of you for their family. And I thank you that you said if we ask, if we knock, if we seek, we'd find. Thank you for a house in order in this place, in these families, and for brightest days ahead. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. If you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus, I want to, before we go, um, if you've never surrendered your life to him, we just talked a whole message about surrendering your life, coming under him. There's only one way to heaven. There's only one way, and that's through Jesus. If you don't know that that is the way you're trusting and you're here today, you want to make your make that sure that heaven is your home. I want to give you an opportunity to pray a prayer. The Bible says, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, Jesus as Lord. If that's you right now, heads up, eyes up, because it's time to be bold. If, that, if that's you, you want to give your life to Jesus. You've maybe been walking away. You're here in church this morning, and now is the time to make a decision to follow him. Anybody, hand up and come on down front if that's you. I'll pray with you right here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you're watching online, I know a lot of people are. Um, I want to lead you in a prayer right now in your living room, right now in your, maybe in your car, on your device. You want to, you know, this message is speaking to you about, I, I need to make an arrangement. I've been saying lip service, but in my heart, I know. And I just feel right now, more than anything, even more than salvation, uh, there's a rededication and reassigning your steps. And so I want to lead you in a prayer, both of rededication and salvation. And just pray this after me. Say, Father, I come under what you say today. The Lordship of Jesus Christ. I believe that you sent your son to die on the cross for me. That he rose again, paid the price for my sin. Today, I declare Jesus is Lord of my life, of my thoughts, of my decision, of my future. I am arranged and ready for battle because I come under my whole life under you. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. If you prayed that, just type it on the comments below. And the other, if you prayed that, even a rededication, we'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, if you need healing in your body before we uh, close today, and as you're dismissed, we'd love to lay hands on you. The Bible says that call for the elders of the church, anoint them with oil, any sick among you to be healed. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week.